morning, and I'm Andy, here to talk about four things that I think every single person, if they, if they actually put into their life, or just made time for in their day-to-day -day life, or just thought about even as a start in their day-to-day -day life, that they would find life more abundant. I believe these four things are Bible-based. I believe that these are four things that as I was feeling a little bit directionless in my life and I was kind of getting to a point where, well, I, I'm not working right now. I'm about to go back to school. I don't have the focus that I had in, you know, while I was doing ministry or while I was, you know, knew my life plan and knew what I wanted to do. And all of a sudden I was, I was thinking, what do I do now? Like, where is my purpose, God? What is, why did you give me breath this morning? What did, what do you want me to do with my day? And so these are four things that I think every single person should consider. My first thing is, should take maybe 30 minutes to three hours of your day, but at least 30 minutes. I think that that's a very bare minimum. And I think that is time spent with Jesus. And time spent with Jesus can be through Bible study and prayer and walking, walking prayers, um, finding, finding alone time. And I don't think it should be just, oh, I'm thinking about God as I read this one page devotional for 10 minutes and then I start my day and everything is chaotic again. I think that time with Jesus needs to be more deliberate. It needs to be set aside. It needs to be, I think it needs to be in the beginning of our day before anything happens because we have no, we might have planned our day, but we have no idea what is coming. I know God does. God does know what's coming and he wants us to be prepared to walk through our days with him. And so in the morning, if we would take time to read scripture, to read books, to read th to read anything which might draw us closer to him and help us to pray. And I do a prayer journal. That's something that is that helps me to focus in the morning because I have so many things on my mind and so many things I want to get done. And so I set all that aside in my mind and I, I prayer journal and I write so that I don't get distracted and I write down my scriptures and I let that time be committing my heart to Jesus. And I think that time is super important because we are only able to give to others or give to the world what we ourselves have. And if we haven't spent our time with Jesus, then how can we share that truth? How can we share the Bible? How can we share the happiness and the peace and the joy that he gives us if we haven't taken time to do just that, fill ourselves with that? Uh, my second thing my, that I would recommend as a daily goal is physical exercise or physical activity. I am obsessed with the fact that our bodies are made to move. I think playing, working, working out, doing any sort of physical activity is what we were designed to do. Our bodies were meant to have fun. Our bodies were meant to get things done and to, to be strong, to be beautiful. And not only does time need to be set aside for working out, but I think that we need to make a conscious effort to do things, go for walks, play with kids, take animals for walks, try a new sport, try a new experience, do something physically demanding and actually work through it. You know, let, watch how your body responds, the endorphins you get. Watch, uh, you know, people will, my family and friends will actually tell me like, Andrea, have you worked out today? Because you're a little bit crabby. You know, they kind of get to the point where they know, they know that that's something that I need in my day. And I'm happier. I'm a happier person after I've worked out. And I'm just a happier person in general on a, you know, long-term basis is if every day I'm doing something active. As soon as we're lethargic, we are no longer giving our bodies what they were, what they're craving. We're no longer giving our bodies the ability to live. You know, it's just we're supposed to be active. So that's my number two. My number three is to educate yourself in something. And this is kind of a wide, you know, parameter thing. I get that, but 
our brains were meant to think, just like our bodies were meant to move, and our brains do think while we do our personal devotions and while we read, and also while we uh, are working out, if we're working on coordination or trying something new, our brains are getting a lot of good new synapses built in that way. But I also think we need to actually take time to read something new, study something, educate yourself, whether it's researching something online, whether it's watching a documentary or watching something um, on television that's educational. Make yourself think. Make your brain do something more than the mundane, you know, the, the, the typical. Make it understand how our body functions or how nutrition helps us or how you know how to garden or you know research politics research uh, health and and physical fitness and research biblical issues start start understanding the differences the church history start under, start understanding political history everything 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 is up for beneficial purposes. Like everything can benefit us. And I think that if we really took time every day and said, I'm going to study whether it's fashion or cooking or anything, like just study something, make yourself a more educated person in something, even if it's just for a short part of your day. The fourth rule I believe makes that makes life worth living is making somebody else feel loved and cared for. Because if you think about what Jesus would do if he was on earth, which if you believe that Jesus is living through us and we are the representatives of him, then what would he be doing? He would be loving people. He would be caring for people. He would be meeting people's needs. And sometimes it's not always what you think. Sometimes people think they're not volunteering or they're not taking care, care of people if they're not at a soup kitchen or being a teacher or you know doing something specifically to help somebody else. But we can help people just by being positive, just by being kind to the people at stores or at restaurants, just by um, praying for people, by going on Facebook and asking, hey, can I pray for you today? Or, uh, or finding somebody that you can encourage, somebody that you can comment on, somebody that you can message, maybe calling up somebody and saying, hey, I just wanted to you know, take a little bit to, to see how you're doing today, or texting somebody, or, or if you're seeing people on a day-to-day -day basis, be kind to those people. Actually make the conscious effort to care about somebody else and to to find out what their needs are. And and if you can meet their needs in some way, whether that be financial or just, you know, someone to talk or listen to or or you know, maybe you have some sort of advice you can give or or better yet, you can share Jesus with them. Find a way to love people. If they need if they need to be cared about, be that person. And whether it's for one person or, you know, you work with a lot of people and you need to show everybody, find a way to be the light. And I think that's rule number four. And that's also a wide variety of opportunities. But I think if, the, if your goal is love who Jesus puts in front of me, just love that person and take care of that person. And whether it's a people or a person or whether it's you, whether it's a day that you need to take time to pray and really focus on bringing yourself closer to God so that you can then go out and share more. That is also caring about people. That's what Jesus would do. And so there are my four rules. One, spending time with Jesus in the morning. Two, getting physical activity in. Three, educating yourself in some form or fashion. And four, doing something for others. Doing something for somebody else. Caring about somebody, loving somebody, treating somebody um, the way Jesus would treat them so that eventually they might be able to know Jesus as their own friend and savior and father. And I'm hoping that this video will allow you to kind of see where the rest of my videos will go because I'm hoping that from this point out I want to give you tips on how to spend that personal devotional time with God and what God's teaching me in my own personal devotional time. Um, physical activity, I want to go through nutrition, I want to go through health, I want to go through different ideas of how to stay physically active and get your body in the best shape it can be. I want to go through uh, education, I want to talk about the things that I'm studying and the things that God is teaching me and different opportunities and ways you can educate yourselves and how you can go about being organized and educating yourself. And I also want to talk about what you can do to help other people and how 
philosophically speaking, you can be somebody's light in this world and how you can how you can help when it doesn't feel like you as you know just a small person can do very much in this huge world if everybody is loving whoever God puts in front of them we can we can make major changes in this world and we can do a really great work so if you would take those four things and to wake up every morning and just work on those four things I think that all throughout the day it would be better <laughs>